Well, hey, this is Pastor Scott Cruz, and I wanted to unpack this verse a little more carefully than what I got to on Sunday. I ran like a crazy man on Sunday. And so let's pick this up. Uh, actually, I was, we're going to be in 16, but we'll start off in 15 here. The world hates the disciples. If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. So Jesus is really encouraging his disciples at this point. Um, you know, And he's, they hated me without reason. They're going to do the same to you. Uh, but when the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who goes out from the Father will testify about me, because that's what the Holy Spirit does. And also you must testify. And then all oh, you'll be put out of the synagogue and all these things. And so, anyway, so Jesus is really laying it on thick. You're talking about what that is, it's going to be bad. But then he says, but very truly, I say to you, it is for your good that I'm going away. Because they're, I mean, sometimes when you're speaking in front of people, like you're talking, and you can just see in their eyes that they're getting afraid or they're getting apprehensive or or something like that. And I think that's what's happening. I think that Jesus is talking and and, and he's like, this all this stuff's good. oh, but wait a minute, guys. But, but very truly, I tell you, it's good for you that I'm going away. Although, unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Now, we're going to check out something here a little more. What? Who is this advocate? So who is the advocate? Of course, we believe it's the Holy Spirit, but let's just take a look at it. And the Living Translation has a kind of a helpful uh, footnote. If we hover over here, it says, uh, it says, or comforter, or encourager, or counselor. The Greek reads a uh, parcelet, okay? And so I'll send to you the advocate. Theologians, and they all agree that it's, it's the Holy Spirit will come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment about sin because people do not believe in me about righteousness. So what does the Holy Spirit do? Well, the Holy Spirit convicts people of their sin. That's the first work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Um, he will, he's going to go to the world and he's going to tell them they're wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. Guys, you're wrong. You are sinners. You're not good. And there is a judgment coming. Because all people do not believe in me about righteousness. Because I am going to the Father where you can see me no longer. And about judgment. Because the prince of this world now stands condemned. Now, I have much more to say to you. More than you can now bear. But when the spirit of truth comes... Now, he's talking about the advocate. Now we get spirit of truth. And let's just see what happens here. Um, we get to see it again. And let's take a look at this in the, in the New Living real quick. So here we have spirit of truth. And we can take a look at the Greek word and see what it says. Let's take a look at this. So if you think that he's looking at a metaphor or something like that, here we are. The spirit of truth comes. That's where it is. And we're going to take a look at this word spirit. And what does it say? And let's even click on it and bring it up here. I'm going to get the definition uh, and they unpack it a great deal right here. This is my Greek lexicon, but it's the Spirit of God and the Holy Spirit. And so this is this is the Holy Spirit. It's not. Uh, it's, it's not. It's this is not a metaphor. And so when the Holy, uh, when the Spirit of Truth comes, He will guide you in all the truth. He will not speak on His own. He'll only speak what He hears, and He will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify Me. That's what the Holy Spirit always does. He convicts sin and draws attention to Jesus. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. And that is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make with you. And so Jesus had to go in order for the Holy Spirit to come. Now, I don't know why. I mean, it was uh, when you get to heaven, you can ask, Lord, why couldn't you both be here at the same time? But here again, we've got the Trinity pictured again we got we got the father right here we got we got the spirit working and of course jesus is the one talking now as the uh video is playing just a little bit here it's only four minutes so i can unpack one more thing for you i i believe that the baptism of the holy spirit is an incredibly emotional experience epipipto is the greek word that we unpacked it means to fall upon and it was an emotional experience and you can look at that video as is someplace else but uh epipipto and i think the reason that the holy spirit is such an emotional experience is such a <clears throat> visible 
experience. It's because he convicts the world of its sin. He shows us how sinful we are. And so when we are, when the Holy Spirit comes in a tangible, manifest way, that epipipto, it fell upon him. It's it's an emotional rush. It's ecstatic. It's and and it comes on. It's it's like I look at my sin and it, and it breaks me so completely how far away from God I am. Because when I'm when I'm faced with His holiness, I get to see myself for what I am. And then something really amazing happens. It's because the Holy Spirit convicts sin, but then what's the next thing that he does? Uh, he, points the, he points to Jesus. That's what he does. It says here that he will glorify me. Why? Because Jesus is the forgiver of sin. And so when we're confronted with the awesome, awesome, awesome holiness of God, and then he points us to Jesus, and we get that washed feeling. I am forgiven. My Jesus, he loves me, and he accepts me, and he makes me clean, and he makes me good. Oh, it's so good. So, he will, he will glorify me. And so, that, so that's this verse, man. Uh, he is so good, and he's so beautiful, and, and he convicts sin. And, but and, but the, another point, though, is that Jesus is telling the disciples that he's coming. You know, I have to go away. And he's, you know, and he's saying, I have to go. Then the Holy Spirit will come. And of course, that happened on the day of Pentecost. May the Lord richly bless you. Hope to see you in church on Sunday.